Hi guys, you're welcome back. Hope you guys are feeling good. My name is Bukumi BK Crown. So we're gonna be checking out how Chicago people are converting to Islam. So let's check it out. Until this day, I kind of try to go back in my mind and my life and try to pinpoint moments in my life where I noticed that that was an impact on where I'm at now. When we first moved to this neighborhood, it was predominantly white. Not a lot of Mexicans, but then it all became Mexican. Anywhere you go, it's like white neighborhood, Mexican neighborhood, black neighborhood. So we kind of never really intermingle with each other. Hmm. I am Mexican and Palestinian. We were raised with Palestinian culture pretty much my whole life. So a lot of the people that we talked to and associated with were um, Palestinian Muslim. And so just recently I've been um, researching more and trying to get closer to the religion and learn more about the faith. The reaction I get among non-Muslims is they're surprised that I'm Latino and Muslim. The reality is that Islam is diverse and there are so many people converting to it, especially in the United States. Mm. I was um, born uh, into a Catholic family. My parents were Catholic. Um, we were raised Catholic. At first I thought it was like the Arabs, you know, I thought Christians were white, Catholics are Mexicans, and blacks are Baptists. And, and Arabs are Muslims, you know. Traumatic experiences in my life, I don't know, I guess it w I would say it hardened my heart towards God and religion, you know, or faith. I was a heavy drinker and heavy drug user. Um, I smoked mar marijuana was my drug um, a lot, like a lot. Hmm. And then I ended up going to prison. I did two years in prison as a Muslim, but I was still in the gang life so I came home and I came home to this neighborhood. No Muslims around me. Mm. Even though my intention was to pursue my life in Islam, I fell right back into the same life. I didn't relate to my parents. It's so difficult to have a religious conversation with people mm. who are not really open to you listen see, yeah. about something else. There's a lot of Latino Muslim people who converted to Islam and because they converted, their families are mostly Catholic and they don't celebrate Ramadan. They don't have that sense of community or family who is also practicing. So they're sort of in the same situation as I am because a big part of Ramadan is bringing people together. Thank you very much for attending our first Iftad at Zohala Foundation. Just to let you guys know, I am going to speak in English first and then I will translate later in Spanish. So in my case, I did take Shahada with my mom when she married my dad when I was about 10 years old. Mm. It was hard realizing that I would have to do this journey by myself because my family wasn't really practicing at the time and I didn't have any Muslim friends. I also did learn that if you don't have someone to look up to, then it's your responsibility, responsibility to become that person for somebody else. So I, I left mm. in 2007, came home in 2009. In 2010, I went back to prison and didn't come home until 2015. Mm -hmm. I ended up catching a federal case. My minimum was 30 years and my maximum was life. Wow. But I remember that one day just asking God, like, man, help me. Give me something, some type of sign or something. They put me in a cell by myself and I find two books, James Patterson and a Quran. And in my eight years of being in prison, I've never, ever, ever seen a Quran laying around in anywhere. Mm. I remember reading a passage that said, do you think that just because you say that you believe that you're not going to be tested? Mm. I didn't end up having to do 30 years. So the rest of this time in prison, I just stuck by the Muslims, ordered you know books about Islam, read as much as I could, and just learned how to pray, fasted and just avoided everything. Hmm. Surprisingly, there are a lot of Muslims in prison. I met Cubans, Colombians, Puerto Ricans. This is the Quran I had during my um, 
last prison bit. So the first time I made the Declaration of Faith, I did it on my own. Like any other decision in my life, I always thought that um, the only person that would be affected by this decision would be me. Hmm. And just like any other decision in my life, I was wrong. Is your mom more comfortable with you wearing the hijab now? Uh, yeah, she still calls me crazy girl. You know, my mom tried on the hijab just, just, just to try it. Just to see. try it. You know, she's a little bit more accepting now. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to explain how it was really meaningful to me. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Took her like a couple months, and now she's. Your mom is happy with it now. She's yeah, she's happy with it. Did you feel like you had to wear it like right right after converting? I actually wanted to wear it since I converted my mom and my dad because they're very Catholic. Mm -hmm. And I was just so afraid of their reaction. Mm -hmm. I guess they haven't seen anybody wearing hijab in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I walk and I go like this and I turn back. The guy goes like, <laughs> he looked at me like, like, and then they went like, and then they went back and looked at me like, I go, what's going on? And actually when I was crossing the border, my cousins were like, oh my God, they're gonna think you're a terrorist. They oh might not gosh. let us in. <laughs> The sisters have, I think, the hardest job of representing Islam, like, because they can't hide. You know, the sisters that cover up, like, they can't go anywhere and not be Muslim. Two, these are the clothes that I have. They're inside out, because I just washed them. I have black, white, pinstripe gray. That's my business one. And then I have this one, too. A dark blue. And as for me, it's like, I can go anywhere and people just like, oh, like I got a beard. There's so much um, Arabic and Islam in Mexican culture. You know, every image that you see of the Virgin Mary, Fatima, Guadalupe, anybody that you want, whatever you want to call her, she's always covered. Even nuns, like, which is so ironic to me that people always point fingers at Muslim women. Oh, they're oppressed, they're oppressed. But it's like, well, a nun is not oppressed, she's completely covered. This is my first Ramadan as a, as a convert, but I fasted two years prior. Don't you guys think it's important to feel that like pain in your stomach to For kind sure. of like remind you of why we're doing it? It was last Ramadan, when, remember when we met her? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I Shahada. Yeah. You weren't Muslim yet. That no, was your, I wasn't. Was that your first iftar? Yes, that was my first time. Did you tell anyone you were doing it or you just... Decided? No, I just, I, I didn't tell anybody. When I said it, I was just like, oh my God, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Like, I, I couldn't even tell my family because they're very religious. I'm like, I'm like, and that's sad, you know, that you, you can't go to your family. Here you go, take this one. Well, this is not authentic. No, porque no tenía cilantro, it didn't have a serrano. Like I knew, I knew it was gonna come up. I knew that the conversation about, you know, terrorism and stereotypes. And I think that's one thing that either it can make you or break you. You could say, I wanna break the stereotypes or I'm scared of what others might say. Those insensitive comments still continue after so many years, especially for women, because I mean, you see, a man walking down the street and you wouldn't know that they're Muslim. But if you see a, a lady with a scarf, it's like automatic, it's, it's an automatic mm -hmm. sign. I feel like we're more targeted sometimes just because of the way we look when people bring up the conversation about 9-11 or uh, terrorism and I'm just like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> If the real Islam is just so away from it, it's not even close to it, that you don't even think about it, mm -hmm. you know? And the people that know that I'm a Muslim, they're like, well, you're Latina, and you know, the whole issue with like our president, mm -hmm. and then you're Muslim, and the whole issue with him and Muslims, and it's like, you're attacked from both sides now. So people get caught up in the, oh, during Ramadan, oh yeah, you just don't eat, you just don't eat. But it's not just about not eating. So it kind of humbles you. It's a time really for reflection. One month out of the year for you to get 
yourself, your soul, you know, your mind and your body, everything together in one um, thing. Prison is a bad place, but it was such a good place too. Like there were so many people that didn't under know anything about Islam, but knew that Muslims fasted during Ramadan. The first year I was out, they were having an event to, for the Eid, like for the end of Ramadan. And I went there. So I went and I started, you know, we, I prayed um, the prayer. And at the end, I started introducing myself to Muslims. And they were in the beginning, because I look Arab, they were like really open, you know, and, and you know, accepting like, hey, and, you know, having conversations with me. And then people's eyes started to wander and they would say things to me like in Arabic. And I would be like, oh, no, Mexiki. And I remember that first time it was like a horrible feeling, man. I felt so welcomed and immediately everything turned around and then they saw my tattoos and then they were just like oh and then they get to talking in arabic and then it was like shunned and i never felt so alone in a place where there was so many people horrible feeling and i know i'm not the only person there's other reverts that feel that way latinos were not really accepted anywhere we're not arabs and we're not black See how that tastes with honey, because these are pretty disgusting. Oh, that tastes way better. This Ramadan has been a huge, huge trial for me between dealing with the my injury before surgery and now it was fighting between um, taking medication and not taking medication and trying to fast and then not being able to fast and it's just like it's been it this definitely has been a very testing ramadan yes we got like 57 minutes and 55 seconds for the next prayer Well, it's supposed to be this way, northeast. My faith has been wavering. I have highs and lows, just like anybody else. Every Muslim, no matter where you are, you're all praying at the same time, and you're all praying in the same direction. Wow, beautiful stories, guys. I really enjoyed the conversations between the Muslim women, you know, trying to let us understand what Islam is all about and why we should stop believing in what is not true, you know, about the negativity out there about Islam. And the guy said, through prison, he got to, he got closer to God. He was giving. 30 years imprisonment and uh, if not they might actually extend it so from there you know he came across the quran and started reading later on his life sentence was reduced and he was later released and amazing amazing you know convert story i really enjoyed watching thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye